Good evening. The time is 8.08 .08 on Wednesday, May the 19th. <clears throat> I am John McEntee, president of the Patterson Education Association. And I am pleased to be joined this evening by Sasha Wolf, our long-term, long-time UNICERV field rep uh, from the Wayne office. So the reason we are creating this video <clears throat> at this late hour uh, is because we wanted to give you a little background on the email, text, and phone messages that we sent out this evening, um, talking a little bit about the temporary restraining order that was issued today. Now, before I get to that, however, I want to just give you a little bit of background on things that have happened that have led up to this. So, as you know, we conducted walkthroughs. Uh, <clears throat> we attempted to get into the buildings on March 25th, which was the earliest we could do it. The school district denied us a little less than a month access to get in there. So we didn't get in there until April 21 and 22. Uh, and a lot of the battles and, and discussions and remediations that we could have had been working on th that entire month between March and April uh, weren't able to be completed until this late part of the year because the school board uh, just kept putting roadblock after roadblock into our way to to work with them not against them but with them so we were very we were very cautious when we went in there to see what it exactly it was they were hiding we had already seen pictures we already knew what was going on we had a pretty good idea in some of the places where members were already stationed what it, things looked like uh, we then learned like you that the school board was going to uh, open up on june 1st they gave no prior knowledge. They, they, in fact, did it under the cover of a budget meeting. Uh, I guess it was last week or the week before, probably about a week and a half ago. And that's where we were. So then, Sasha, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you because from, from that point forward, you, myself, and the network attorneys that work with us um, really have been working around the clock as this meeting here at 8 o'clock at night is proof of. Uh, Sasha, can you just talk a little bit first about what we started to do once we learned that they were going to try to reopen without us completing our inspections of the HVACs? Right, so let's just take a step back. So we had marshaled the forces of the PEA's building delegates to inspect each and every work site, right? That's what John referenced. We attempted to do that in March. We're blocked from doing that. Um, at that point, we filed a unfair practice charge with the Public Employment Relations Commission. And you'll hear the word PERC, which is an acronym for that state agency. PERC uh, officiates between management and labor in the public sector. And one of the aspects of the law that PERC is charged with upholding is the duty to bargain in good faith. Um, part and parcel of a board's duty to bargain in good faith with the union is to provide information necessary to um, investigate and maintain employee working conditions. Um, so just as we can request from the employer reports and documents related to health and safety, we can also inspect work sites um, regarding health and safety commission. That's considered information gathering, just as how we would gather information uh, from documents. Um, so when the board prevented the union from going in in March and doing that inspection initially, we filed a charge with PERC saying they're violating the law. Now, at some point, as John referenced, we were permitted to go in in April. Um, but when we did go in in April, those inspections were incomplete because even though they allowed us access to the buildings, they prevented us from having access to the HVAC, Univents, and ventilation units. So we had our attorneys amend the unfair practice charge. So that means we added extra information to say, listen, we were denied access to these specific units. Um, while this was going on, then the district, as John said, made this decision, we're opening June 1st. 
And that put us in a dilemma because we were not comfortable, except for a small minority of schools saying that the schools were safe because the union had not completed its investigation. Um, we had filed this charge with PERC, but if any of you are familiar with the court system in general, or you've dealt with state agencies, these can take a long time for cases to um, get resolved, can take a year or more. So what PERC has, has the option of doing in some cases is to file for interim relief. What that means is that, listen, we don't have time to wait for uh, PERC to issue a full case. We want to sort of issue basically sort of like a stop the clock to say, listen, Unless you grant this emergency temporary relief, um, it doesn't matter if we ultimately will win the case because we won't be able to get what we wanted. In this case was to make sure that we inspect the schools. If we win the right to inspect the schools a year from now, it's going to be a Pyrrhic victory. It's moot because we'll have already been working. So our attorneys then filed this application for interim relief, or you also hear us use the term an injunction, uh, on two counts. One, to allow us to access the remaining ventilation systems that we had not seen. And number two, to say, listen, until such time as we can, we can view this, staff members shouldn't be required to re report in person, because we haven't given it our stamp of approval to say it's safe. So the parties had arguments. Um, they submitted briefs, so a written statement, uh, along with a certification, which are sworn statements from, from John, from Joyce Spinelli, one of your officers, from myself, regarding some of the issues. And today, PERC issued what's called a temporary restraining order. Um, a restraining order is injunctive relief. It basically is saying to the district, either you have to allow them to do something or stop, you have to stop doing things um, temporarily um, until such time as we can resolve this, the underlying issues. So here's what Perk said. A, the union must be allowed to complete its inspections. So beginning immediately, the union has the right now to finish its inspections, go in, look at the HVAC units, the univents, and any other ventilation systems. What does that mean specifically? That means opening them up. Are they functional? Have the filters been changed? When was the last time they were changed? What has been the maintenance regarding these units? Um, and we have to do that for all the schools that we had previously marked red and yellow. Uh, which is approximately 40 work sites. So that's one. And the second part of it, which is probably the more extraordinary, but again, speaks to the skill of our attorneys and the power of your union in fighting this, is that until such time as the union completes its inspections, the district cannot require those employees who have been working remotely to come in and work in person. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that again. Until the union has completed its inspections, the district cannot require those employees who have been working remotely to come in to do in-person instruction. We hope to do these inspections as soon as possible, and we're gonna be meeting soon to start scheduling these things. But you know, there are a lot of buildings to inspect, um, these things take time. Plus, we don't know if the union, uh, the district's going to be up to its old antics again and trying to prevent us. Um, and if it certainly does, we're going to say, listen, we haven't completed our inspections. Those we shouldn't be allowed to uh, resume in-person instruction. Uh, so that's where we stand now. We're still getting further guidance from our attorneys, um, and we will have more information available. But that is the gist of what PERC ruled. So one of the things, Sasha, that I think we need to make very clear to everyone that will watch this, whether it's through a link we send on the email or the text messaging, which you know, we'll certainly make sure this is out there, is that 
you know, we, we took every shot that we could to do to protect our members. And one of the things that we have been saying all along, and, and this goes back to the secretary issue that the superintendent refused to budge on, as well as the guidance counselors and all the people who were in those categories of employees. You know, we are subjected now to the terms and conditions within this temporary restraining order. And, you know, it, it isn't, it isn't, you know, why couldn't you include this and why couldn't you include that? And why did they include this and why didn't they include that? You know, so we, we are bound by what's in this order. Um, I fully expect, I think, I don't think I'm talking too out of school here by saying this, that the district is going to challenge this at some point. Can you talk a little bit about that, Sash? Yes. Yeah, so the, the PERC, as part of its rules and procedures, allows a party to challenge a temporary restraining order. Um, and in fact, the order uh, outlines a procedure and a certain amount of time for them to try to appeal it. Um, in order for them to try to challenge this, they actually would have to go to court. Um, they would have to go to the appellate division, which is the intermediate courts in New Jersey. There's the Superior Court, the appellate division, and then the New Jersey Supreme Court. And they'd have to file what's called an interlocutory appeal, which is basically to say, normally you file appeals when the case is done. But because this is sort of in the middle of the case, we have this interim relief. They wanna to say to the appellate division, wait a minute, you got to. You have to intercede here. We think something is wrong. Um, that's you know obviously rare, and it's going to take a lot of time. I, I again, I can't speak to what the chances are of the district uh, prevailing on that, um, but that's pretty extraordinary for them to attempt it. But you know, as you know from history, uh, money's no object when it comes to the district spending money on attorneys rather than employees. You know, so that's another, another thought that came to my mind is that, you know, the, the average educator in Patterson, of which I am as well, the average person, they, they, they monitor what goes on in the union, but they're so busy in the classroom or they're so busy in the office, or they're so busy in the guidance counselor's office, or the nurse's office, or regardless of wherever they are stationed in the school district, the security office. There's only so much they can pay attention because from eight, typically around, you know, we'll estimate at eight o'clock, sometimes earlier, to three o'clock, sometimes later, they are, they are in their own little world because they have a responsibility to the students, and that is what they follow. So in a typical member reads or listens to this tonight, what they're going to ask themselves is, how does this impact me? Am I included? Am I not included? And I think, you know, one of the things we talked about today is we don't yet know all the details because we are still analyzing what was in this decision. Um, we think we have an idea, but we'd be speculating 100% if we said it at this time. Um, but I think it's important for us to, to note regardless of what it's going to include or not include, you know, it's, it's now, we are now dealing with the legal system, quote unquote, even though it's not really typically a court we went to, um, but we're dealing with a state now agency that is kind of mediating this for us. So, and I, and I said this to you guys last night because we knew that this was really our last roll of the dice here. Win, lose, or draw, I know that we've done everything we possibly can do to protect as many of our employees as we can. And I think that is really what, what needs to, to, to be emphasized is that even if we had lost this today, and this was, a, this was a fantastic step in the right direction to reopening safely, because I think that is where, we, what we've always said, and that is what we've always done, is that this has always, from start to finish, been about reopening safely. You know, and I know there's, there are, sometimes words can be minced. Our schools have never been closed. I, I wanna emphasize also, we've been working. Our, our teachers, our instructional aides, our PAs, our nurses, our guidance counselors, our secretaries, our security officers, we've, we have not stopped working during this pandemic. So when the, when the school district likes to say, reopen schools, they need to, they, what they need to specify is in-person learning is what's the change here. Uh, because our employees have never stopped working yet. Yeah, I agree with you, John. You know, when we 
in general, if we if we file a grievance and we go to arbitration or we're filing a court case, we're going to ask for as much as we can to benefit our employees. Um, and this is no different. Um, you know, sometimes we're able to get everything that we seek for when we're taking some kind of action. Um, sometimes we lose completely. Sometimes it lands somewhere in the middle. Obviously this, we got most of what we wanted. Um, we weren't able to get everything that we wanted, but we are still able to protect a large portion of our membership uh, from what was the district's arbitrary order, everyone back uh, reporting to duty. Uh, physically. I also just want to piggyback on what you said, you know, this is, this wasn't just a legal strategy, you know, the reason we were able to win this case is not just the skill of our attorneys, but the fact, and I want to thank the, the building delegates in Patterson, you did these inspections. Um, and you found out about these issues, and you tried to push for further access and were denied and then sent that information to the union. If we hadn't done that, we would have just had sort of this speculation about the buildings, about whether it was unsafe or not. And speculation would not have been enough for us to get a temporary restraining order. So kudos to the PEA and the building reps and all the members that assisted because that organizational basis helped us win this case. You know, I, I also think it needs to be said too <clears throat> that we have been trying to convince the school district to get to this place since last July. Um, and, and, and when they ordered our secretaries back and they ordered our guidance, and I keep referencing that, that these groups, because they've been in these unsafe buildings the entire time. And the school district took all this time to get to a place where they actually needed to start putting their money where their mouth was by getting the purifiers, by getting the scrubbers, uh, by getting, you know, we knew the condition of the buildings, but the superintendent wasn't budging on anything. I mean, we've had meeting after meeting, banging our heads against the, the, the table. Um, but all we kept hearing from the superintendent was, your employees don't want to work. And essentially calling them lazy. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm really pleased that we got the decision that we did today. You know, obviously, you know, we, we took every shot we could to try to get to this point. You know, it's still a long road ahead of us because now we have, a, you know, a very important delegate meeting tomorrow. I kind of want to pivot to that now and just plug that a little bit because if you're a delegate on this call, don't send someone, be there. I, I know you've got personal responsibilities and I know that you, you know, are getting less than 24 hours notice here. This isn't the way I wish that this, this unfolded. But when you do these types of orders, you don't get to pick when the perk staff agent is going to either tell you yay or nay. Um, but if you really truly can't make it, please have a delegate there from your building because we are now gonna be expected. And I think we may wanna talk a little bit about this just briefly because tomorrow the delegates will hear it anyhow. Time for us now, we've gotta act above board we are not going to purposely slow down these walkthroughs. The only thing that would slow them down, you know, could possibly be the facilities director being on some, you know, on, on some vacation, which we heard today he's, he is until the 28th. Besides them slowing us down or Neil Mapp not being available because he's on vacation when 40 schools aren't ready to open, um, we need our delegates starting probably Monday to be ready to, to, ready to go in and we'll have to figure out, you know, whether that's going to be before school, well, not before school, but during school, after school. These are all details, I think, still that we have to iron out, um, because if it's going to be during school, like one of their attorney letters writ uh, was written to us yesterday. So, so we don't know yet how that, the timing of this, but I think we should stress the importance of actually being ready to go Monday at a moment's notice. Yeah, so the... Part and parcel of this temporary restraining order is that PERC expects the union to act in good faith to do these inspections. So, you know, this is very what's considered extraordinary relief, like basically saying, listen, district, we're going to stop you from making people physically report to work. But if we 
drag our feet and say, we're just going to use this as an excuse to try and keep school closed without doing the inspections, PERC is going to dissolve the TRO and say, everyone go back to work physically. So we have, PERC has given us this opportunity to finish what we started. We wish we had more time. And if we had done this in March, but we have to take the time that we have uh, prior to the end of the month, which is next week, to complete these inspections. So we're going to be meeting with building reps tomorrow. We're going to be doing some additional uh, training, developing some additional forms uh, to work on. Again, this is all being done on very short notice. Um, so within the next day or two, um, and then just giving the building reps pointers, and then it's going to be about scheduling. Um, listen, some of the buildings, it may be done very quickly, but we have some bigger buildings which have, you know, a lot of univents. Each classroom has its own univent, um, or it has a mixture of univents, uh, some HVAC systems or something else. That's going to take time. And um, if, as John alluded to, the director of maintenance is on vacation and doesn't allow us access, well, that doesn't speak to our bad faith, but it speaks to the district's bad faith in obstructing it. And that's not going to make the people at PERC very happy um, if, if the district tries to dissolve or repeal the TRO. Uh, but we have to do our part, um, not just because PERC access asks us to, but because part of our whole impetus to do this was to try to make sure the buildings are safe. And that's why we want to finish our inspections. Yeah, I think we, we, we can end there because I think what you just said right now is finish the job. We want to finish the job. We went in, we inspected the schools, you know, and, and they left the most important piece out, which is the air you breathe. So I, I think if you take no, no message, from this video, other than that, you know, our delegates need to finish the job that they were told to do. Um, we will address everyone tomorrow at the emergency DA meeting a little bit more in depth. We'll give you hopefully some sort of an outline, either verbally or in writing, because things are moving fast on what it is we're going to be having you do. Uh, and then we'll take it from there. So I don't know if there's anything else, Sasha, you want to close with, but I think we've pretty much covered what we can cover based on the limited information we have while we, while we dissect this, this order uh, and see how it applies to, to each member of the bargaining unit. Um, anything else you wanna close with, Sash? Yeah, I know there's gonna be a lot of questions from people uh, regarding you know, who it applies to, uh, what's involved. We are working to try to get comprehensive answers to that. Um, which um, you know, PEA will distribute at some point. We just wanna make sure that we have everything correct um, and that we don't misspeak as per the TRO. Um, so we are gonna be working on those information to get out to you. Um, so if you have questions, we understand, um, we are, we're gonna be working as fast as we can to try to answer those questions for you. Right, and, and, I, and I just wanna close also by saying, you know, the, the goal here is to get schools reopened safely. And part of reopening safely is having the ability to um, inspect these air and HVAC systems. Now, you may be sitting here and say, well, my school district didn't do this in my school district. Well, this is, this is what should have been done uh, essentially. And maybe it was, and you just weren't aware, but we, we need to make sure that we protect you so that you all can do the job that you're paid to do, which is to, to keep this school district running smoothly and at the end of the day, you want to be able to say you can go home and, and, and not make anyone sick in your household. So I know this is a little bit more longer than I anticipated. Sorry, we aren't able to go deeper, a deeper dive into this right now. You know, but we have certainly gotten the message out to you. You all learned about this first. And uh, as we start to unpeel this more, we will certainly get more information out to you. So I want to wish you all a great evening. I want to thank you for what you do. I want to thank our delegates for the job that they've done and they'll, they'll continue to do Monday uh, as we get back into these buildings to finish the job. Thank you, Sasha, also for putting in a lot of late hours with us here. It does not go unnoticed by the membership, and especially myself. So everyone have a great night. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.